just started with a flesh cut. Goes back 40 years. The owner of this property said that this tree was uh, cut back about 40 years ago and it has failed. The whole thing, this big, beautiful blue oak, failed as a result of decay that started with this bad cut. You look at that and say, well, what's wrong with that cut? Well, a flesh cut is when you cut far too close and don't allow the branch bark ridge or the branch collar to contain the cut. Now, different trees react differently and oak will eventually rot out. Sometimes even a, a proper cut can lead to long-term decay. But if you do a flesh cut and you don't encapsulate that wound properly, then long-term decay can lead to, let's see if I can do this without falling. There we go. Long-term decay can lead to that. The client wasn't aware that this tree was this bad off. It was fully leafed out and for all intents and purposes just looked like a old oak tree. No, it was an old oak tree. A very old oak tree with a lot of internal decay. All of this was hidden. You couldn't see it. All you could see was that wound up there and there's another connecting wound. That also is a flesh cut. You know, you look at this and say, well, it was cut way out here. No, it was cut way back here. This is 40 years of callus tissue growing up and around. So the wound is way back in through here. Now a lot of people say, well, you don't want to leave a stub. That's true, you don't want to leave a stub. But you do want to leave enough tissue that it will grow and, and wall off. So there's a, a whole process recognized as compartmentalization of decay in trees. And it's called coat it. Very important to understand a proper cut. Now all that being said, you can also say, well, branches rip. And when a branch rips off, then you've got the same kind of problem. And that's true. You know, everything dies, everything decays, everything goes back to, back to the soil. But as professionals, if we make improper cuts and speed up this process, or create a situation that's going to lead to long-term in term internal decay, then, then we're not doing the clients any favors and we're certainly not doing the trees a favor. Now let's look at the back side of this tree. That appears to be a wound. That's probably a limb that was removed. That definitely is a limb that was removed. And that is also a really old flesh cut. That's kind of cool there because that is an ancient wound. Gosh, I'd say that's more than 40 years old. And there's probably somebody living down in there. It looks like uh, somebody's habitat. Hello! This happened to me one time and a big raccoon came up out at me. This is too small so it's probably just squirrels in there. Now I got the uh, job of bidding on how to get this out of here. Hillside jobs are always tough. You know, it's just a matter of figuring out the best way to get all this wood over to that point without it falling down the hill. <sighs> Not a fun job any way you look at it. So let's take the examples that I just showed you and let's go look at another tree. This isn't the same kind of oak, this is a valley oak. The previous tree was a blue oak. Uh, it was Quercus douglasi. This is a Quercus lobata. This is also a Quercus lobata here, a much smaller specimen. Now, I've worked on this tree several times in the past, but it's a tree in an interesting situation. 
This is located at a church. So the liability of a, uh, a failure is much, much greater on a big tree like this. You've got big, long, heavy limbs. And after all the rains that we've had, this tree has just flushed out with so much growth, so much additional weight. It's trying so hard to survive. But let's go up and look and see if we can find any wounds or defects that may have some hidden surprises. It's kind of hard to see. It's dark. I can see there's at least one, two cables up in this tree. Um, I see an old wound right in through here. There's an old stub wound. There's a wound there. There's lots and lots and lots of wounds throughout the tree. I see oh, there's another cable, one, two cables holding up that massive side over here. So somebody in the past recognized that there were some uh, defects. This looks like an old possibility of a wound here. That's kind of funny looking. Definitely a big, big wound there. And you can look at it and say, well, it's healed. It's grown around. Okay, you saw those last images. You have no idea of what's going on on the inside of this tree. Cool. So let's look at the rest of the tree. I see two more cables up there supporting just a massive big limb over the building. There's an old wound up there. There's a wound. There's a wound that uh, doesn't look too decayed yet, but you can see quite a few years of uh, callous tissue. There's another wound up there. So there's a lot going on on this tree. You've also got a lot of construction that went on around here. Its entire root system is now paved over. This tree is probably 150 years old and it was here long before this church. So it's in its final, <laughs> final days of its life. And you look up and say, Oh, well, look at how healthy it is. Look at how full and green. Look at how much foliage there is. The tree is really, really doing well. Well, there's a huge difference between structural integrity, decay, weakness in the wood, and leafing out. An entirely hollow tree can leaf out and be really, really full, but not have the structural integrity to support itself. So I'm guessing on this tree, but this really has me concerned because that's old. That is, I mean, if you're going to count these little ridges, kind of like you count the rings of growth from how long this callus has grown over it, that's probably 40 or 50 years ago that was done. So what's going on on the inside of this tree is anybody's guess. There are tools that can measure that sort of stuff. And I believe that they should definitely have it done. Because a failure of this tree would be catastrophic. Could you imagine Easter Sunday and having all the people around this tree when it decides to go? That would be horrible. Alright, to wrap this up. I see a lot of oozing from the trunk and I'm working my way up through here and look at that. That mushroom is growing out of the wood. So there's very likely some decay down here. And there's multiple mushrooms. I wish I could tell you what species. It almost looks like our malaria, but you don't really ever see that growing on the wood. I instructed them to pay close attention to any mushrooms that may erupt around the base of the tree and if they ever see them to at the very least get a photograph. So my recommendation is going to be some weight reduction, possibly do a tomograph uh, inspection to potentially determine just how hollow this tree is. But I would bet money that it's quite hollow.